Rogers. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with me, Mr. Michael Manzi, who is the Manufacturing Information Systems Practice Lead at Fane's Elstra. So welcome, Michael. Thank you, Chris. And uh, you did well with that. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful, my friend. Do you use an acronym for that or do you just go with all the words? MIS is what we're kind of going with. <laughs> all right. All right. MIS. Everything's a three-letter acronym. <laughs> That's right. It's got to, to be in the, 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 the world that we live in. It has to be an acronym, right? Correct. <laughs> Well, I'm we excited. should do a podcast just on acronyms. But uh. that's right, that's right. I'm so I'm pumped up to have you. Now, where are you located out of, Michael? Uh, I'm with uh, Fine Zelstra's headquartered out of Grand Rapids. I am located in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, you're in Cleveland. Okay, okay. Yes. We'll get to uh, we'll get to some fun stuff later on in the conversations about sports teams and things like that. So, are you from Cleveland or or what? I was uh, born and raised in Cleveland, um, you know, spent some time outside of it, but I would say 90% of my life spent in Cleveland. Okay. All right. Anxious to get to those answers then later. So uh, get us started. Maybe we love to hear from our, our heroes about their journeys. I know you've had a fantastic career. So, you know, just walk us through how, how it's been for you. You know, um, I think Robert Frost uh, you know, had a poem. I took the road less traveled by and it has made all the difference. Um, my journey has not been a straight line journey. Um, it's been a journey of, you know, from crawling to standing to running. Um, my grad went in high school, deciding what I wanted to do. You know, I had good grades. I had scholarships at places, but uh, in my head, I thought I was too smart. And, and, I, and I, at least I was smart enough to recognize that. And I was, I was fearful that if I went to college, I didn't have the discipline to, to, to really do what I needed to do. Right. Um, I, I felt that uh, some of the outside influences at college might derail me. Um, and, and I've seen it happen to some friends and things like that. And so I decided to join the military. I, I went into the Navy. Um, they had a nuclear program. Um, so I became a Navy nuke. It's, uh, it's an interesting program. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. It's, uh, it's brutal. Um, they compare it, uh, what the Navy SEALs are physically. The Navy nuke is mentally, um, starting a class. I think when they say when we went to boot camp, there was about 1000 or 1200 of us. Two years later, when we got off the boats, there was about 300 of us left. Um, wow. You, they drop you out for just about anything. But, you know, if you're trusting somebody to run a nuclear reactor under the water, potentially in foreign waters, um, you know, you, you, you're kind of looking for, you know, people that can handle a certain level of stress and be able to respond and have a level of confidence in right. what they're doing. Right. So. Well, thank you for your props, service. Thank you. That's my props to the Navy nuclear program. Um, but if you have what it takes, you want to test yourself, put yourself through it. Uh, I, I spent 20 hours a day in a classroom, um, and it was brutal. Um, some of my best friends I've made in life were there, but, uh, I was a mechanic in the Navy. So I worked in the engine room. I operated pumps, evaporators, nuclear reactors. You know, I learned how to fix all this stuff, turn a wrench, um, now you, you six said, years. You said something that just caught my ear. Did you say 20 hours a day in a classroom? Yeah, at the nuclear power school. We, we had, uh, it was a six month school in that first two years, and we called one the light side and the dark side. We're all <laughs> Star Wars geeks. But uh, during the first three months, uh, you know, you, you're kind of breaking into it. And in the last three months, you're deep into it. And uh, you would show up at the school, it was dark. When you left the school, it was dark. So it was, we called it the dark side. Oh, my gracious. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. That just, that was, that was amazing. No, we can do a whole nother podcast on that one. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Um, then this, of course, this learning to handle the stress of submarine life was a whole different, you know, uh, uh, thing as well. But yeah. uh, at some point in time, I said, you know, the military was enough. Um, decided I wanted to be in charge of my own life, you know, figure out what time I wanted to get up. Did not necessarily want to have my shoes shined every day. Um, and it was just time to, to come home and grow. Yeah. So got out of the Navy. Uh, did a, like a a job at a chemical company for a couple months, realized that wasn't for me, uh, got into the maintenance field, became an industrial electrician for two or three years. Sure. Uh, during that course of time, um, I, you know, there was a lot of hours. I approved, you know, several machines uptime and, and that, and it just wasn't rewarding for me. I was seeing other people get a lot of credit for, um, concepts I was coming up with. Uh, and at that point in time, I met a girl and got married, uh, and, we looked at things. We looked at our finances. Uh, I had my uh, GI bill and we decided it was time to, we, we could send, I could go to college. So 
I went to community college for two years, um, Lakeland Community College in, in uh, Willoughby, Kirtland, Ohio. Uh, was a uh, math student of the year my second year there. Gra- graduated summa cum laude with, uh, I think I had a 396. Uh, missed the 4.0 because I took the hardest math class in the summer with the hardest professor and only got a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> you just like so. the torture. I'm picking that up. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I, you know what, you're probably right. <laughs> but, uh, I went to Cleveland state after that. Um, and I went, I was there for two or three years. I, I while I was there, I interned at Rockwell, uh, I was working on the global missile defense project, uh, which was a really cool project. I had the, the military background and I had the, um, confidentiality clearances. So I was put into that group, um, graduated from college, uh, in decided, uh, you know, didn't quite want to stay at Rockwell. Um, right. You know, it's just uh, seemed at that point it was uh, just too much ladder climbing going on at the time, at least uh, around the group I was in. And I, I found this other company, uh, uh, Washington Group. Um, they had an opening in their power group. I wanted to be a controls engineer, but uh, the pay was really good. Um, I liked the hours. I liked the people I met with. And I was in round robin interviews and it went really well and uh, was there. And then one day after about being there a year, now nah, maybe a couple months. Uh, they had me doing a, a arc flash study, and they gave me these, these Excel forms that I had, and you know, this output from a, a program. And they said, "Here, um, keep you know, turn all these these outputs into this Excel report." And so I look at this, you know, one page of Excel, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. And I was doing. I noticed I was doing the same thing over and over. So I decided there's about to be a better way to do this, and I, you know, bought an Excel for Dummies book learned about macros. And then I saw that there was coding behind Excel, VBA code. And I'm like, oh, so I wrote a VBA program that turned uh, three months worth of copy and pasting into a five minute push button. It would go and retrieve all the files, format everything and just out, you know, spit out the report. So in a 60,000 person company in my first year, I was runner up innovator of the year. Wow. For doing that. That's amazing. So that was, yeah. Thank you. And uh, then, you know, the controls group, asked the power group lead, uh, um, hey, we, we're doing this project. We need somebody that can write some code. Do you have anybody? You can borrow Mike for a little bit. Um, and I haven't gone back to the power group since. <laughs> so I ended up uh, working at uh, some water plants around, around the Cleveland area, one being the city of Cleveland, uh, where I got in, introduced to a bunch of GE software products. Um, and the GE rep in the area noticed my work uh, and pried me away from Washington Group. So I went for working for a company called Gray Matter Systems for close to 10 years. Um, within that, I learned how to do SCADA work, historian work, reporting work, got into networking, uh, taught myself uh, uh, how to build virtual servers, um, and, and self-educated myself into becoming, you know, uh, ultimately an OT expert. Yeah. Uh, I understood the, you know, the, the network components, uh, how the PLC programming, and, and all, the, all, the, all the modules that were involved on the process control side. And uh, at, at some point there, I, I felt I needed to grow some more. Um, so I went to uh, PPG and became a global engineer for them and got into designing their process control networks on a global scale, working with the ITOT team. Um, and even driving that, uh, you know, I, I caught the attention of one of the senior VPs of IT when I sent a $300,000 capital request across his desk that wasn't, didn't even have his name on it. So I get a call from this guy and he's like, who the heck do you think you are? <laughs> after, after about a 15 minute conversation, you know, he kind of agreed with me. And then we had a big ITOT summit. Um, so we drove that um, project ultimately stalled there. Uh, there was some instability in the upper management. Um, uh, uh, an activist investor came in and, and stalled the pro uh, stalled, stalled the project we were working on. Right. Um, and Kenna Metal called with a funded $300 million modernization project. Um, so I went to work for them, uh, helping design their OT networks, uh, designing the machines to be network capable and um, smart machines ready to be plugged into the plant floor and deliver the information we want. Um, COVID hit. Then uh, when you're designing stuff and you carry a big number, you know, you, you become expendable. Um, so I was unemployed for all of about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Fian Zilstra called. And uh, uh, one of my friends from the past, uh, uh, Brian Cahalan, now the president of the industrial tech group within Fian Zilstra, and Kyle Reisner, who was a director of customer success, um, 
you know, said, funny, you're calling, we were going to call you tomorrow. Um, you know, they re- recently have taken a position at Fine Zilstra and we're expanding the capability of the industrial technology team and made, made me an offer. Wow. What a story. And I, I know Ryan, I've met him before. Of course, we've had one of your colleagues, Jay Call on, eco yes. as well. So, you know, man, what an amazing story, Mike. I mean, it's just, you've been all over the place. It sounds like you traveled the world too. Oh, I could list it off. I mean, I've been to Germany so many times, Italy, Finland. Uh, I was stationed in Pearl Harbor. I've been to Guantanamo Bay twice. I've been through the Panama Canal twice, uh, a couple you know, islands in uh, the Caribbean, all up and down the East Coast, the West Coast, a month in Japan, a month in Guam. And, you know, I tell people since I was on submarines, um, you know, I've been to 100 countries, probably seen six of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I can't tell you all of them. <laughs> That's right. You, you, you can't tell us. That's right. So... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, I tell you, just with that knowledge and with that experience, I can only imagine the advice that you have for others that, that want to pursue a career in industry. So what would you offer up for that young person out there who may be listening? And I've given a, um, a few speeches at some colleges. And, and one of the, the first things I, I tell them is be an advocate for yourself. You know, uh, don't be a passenger in the ride of your life. You know, mm-hmm. Be active. And um I remember at one company I was working at and I would go into my boss's office every day and tell him how I was making the company money. And that year, nobody got a raise except me. And, and all my buddies looked at me. It was almost like a scene out of office space. You know, you don't seem to be working as hard as the rest of us and you got a raise. Right. And, and I said, okay, um, what do you do here? And he's like, I, I do AutoCAD. And what do you do here? Yeah, I do AutoCAD. How many people here do AutoCAD? You know, like a uh, hundred. What do I do? Well, what do you do? I was like Chandler being to them. You know, what does Chandler do? Uh, I, I program. How many people here program? Me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, try to find that niche that makes you unique, that separates you from the pack. And then let your boss know that what you're doing for him matters. Right. And, and so when that, and, and now as a boss, you know, People think their bosses always recognize what they do. Their bosses are actually quite busy uh, just trying to keep the department going. And they, they need that feedback from them or they're just going to assume that you're just doing your job. And, you know, and it's not, if I didn't hear anything good about you or anything bad about you, there's no reason to fire you, no reason to promote you. Yeah. Um, so do you think, you know, so far as advocating for yourself, that could be taken a couple ways. You could go too far to one side where you're being pushy and you're, it's all about me, me, me. And then you could be, like you said, the meek person who, who never says anything. So where did you find a happy medium? What, what advice would you have there? That's, that's, that is, that is the, that is the key to that. Cause you don't want to be that backstabbing ladder climber. Right. Um, you got to keep your integrity. Don't lie. Right. Um, and, and, and be honest and, and you know, your boss will, you know, if he's a good boss, will appreciate honest feedback. Right. Don't, uh, don't go into hyperbole. Don't exaggerate. Um, and, and if, and what they really appreciate, and I, if I've, I've done this a couple of times and you remember the first time somebody said, I don't believe you just did that fall on the sword. You know, when, when you, when you messed up and, and, and you did something incorrect or you did something that's going to hurt the project, right. fall on the sword, oh. go to the boss immediately, let them know what happened and, and, and help be part of the solution. That's right. That, that, that whole owning it. When I see people, particularly on our team that, then just step up and own it and just, just, Hey, it, that's my bad, but I've learned from it. Here's what we're going to do to fix it to your point of, of the solution. That's key. Thank you. Very good. Now, how about mentors? Now, so you've been all over, you know, so many different places. Have, did you find it hard to actually latch on to some mentors and also in your position now or throughout your career, when have you had an opportunity to be mentors to others? Mentors are absolutely critical. Um, another thing I, when I talk to younger engineers, I talk about building your library and, okay. and, and your library, can, you know, consists of a skill sets that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're always adding to your skill sets, but it also consists of your network, mm-hmm. the people, you know, uh, you know, and, and within that group are your mentors. Um, I've been lucky to have several very good ones. Um, I've had some bad ones and, you got to recognize, you know, when you're in a bad one and you got to get to extrapolate, you get extract yourself from that situation. Right. Um, good mentors, you know, want to advocate, they will advocate for you. They will enable you to do great things. 
Um, and, and they'll be honest with the feedback on you when you're falling short. You know, so it's, you know, they'll praise you when you need to be praised and they'll tell you that you're not living up to what you're supposed to be doing. But then they'll also add the advice of how to get better, how to grow things that worked for them, didn't work for them. Um, that's what a mentor should do. And yep. How do you find them? I think you kind of find each other. You know, if you're lucky enough, you get assigned um, to somebody. But I, I honestly believe that, you know, as long as you're willing to put yourself out there um, right. and, and communicate to people and things like that, you, you like people will find each other. And good people that want to develop people look for people that want to be developed. And, 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 and that's where we talked about before. You got to advocate for yourself. You can't be meek. And you can't exaggerate because if I have somebody, I know, is constantly exaggerating to me, um, I don't want to work with that person because they're just, you know, uh, a glory hound. Um, and I want somebody, you know, that that wants to develop, that wants to be, you know, a, a real a real solution provider. Um, I tell the guys that uh, I hire now, um, if you're working for me doing the same thing in five years, I'll be disappointed. Right. Right. You got to have that drive. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, and I'll, and another thing I tell them, I'll never pigeonhole you. You know, if you want to grow, I'm going to let you grow. And I'm not afraid to move you on and, and have you do better things knowing I have a hold of Phil. I've worked for people that I felt I got pigeonholed. Right. And that's the worst feeling ever because you're doing a great job and you're, you're making a company a ton of money and they're loving what you're doing, but you're not growing. And, and you're, you're, and if that's all you want to do your entire life, maybe you're happy doing it. But if yeah. you want to grow and they're afraid to move you or promote you or, 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 or enable you to grow because they're afraid of having to backfill the spot because of the, the work you're doing, you need to extract for yourself from that situation. Right. And have the courage to do that because it can be, yes, it can be intimidating. For sure. And that's that advocate thing. It says, it's, I, have a, I have a tendency to throw a simple word out there that has a whole bunch of complex meanings right. behind it. That's right. That's right. Now, I am curious with, it, with, with your illustrious career, what would be a highlight? And it could be maybe from the Navy or, or, or you know, post-Navy work too. Just, just curious, anything that stands out. Well, I did like, uh, you know, I already talked about that Excel program. That was, that yeah. was pretty fun. Um, the other highlight to me is when I developed uh, um, a virtual and thin solution for gray matter systems. So I, I taught myself VMware, figured out how to do all this multiple server setup within a couple of host boxes, you know, set up the switches myself and, and put together a whole multi-layered control system um, that's deliverable within a box. Wow. That's awesome. Yep. Great job. Yeah. And that's all leveraging your library too. I mean, I, I did a lot of research on my own, but I knew like the IT manager from the city of Cleveland water. Yep. I knew, uh, you know, guys from Rockwell. I knew guys from, you know, GE and, you know, and, you know, and, and I definitely leveraged it and, and, and I knew how to do my own research, but I also knew people that knew how to ask the right questions or if I was asking the right questions. Right. And that's where those, those mentors come in too. So key. Yes. So key. Last, last question on your career. Then we'll talk to, we'll talk outside of work. When are you the happiest? What work are you doing? Seeing people I enable do great things. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can totally see it too. Totally see it. Well, Mike, let's, let's talk a little bit outside of work here for, for fun and get our listeners to know who you are uh, when you're not behind the keyboard making magical things happen. All right. Well, I usually am behind a keyboard making magic. Okay, things. maybe that's your <laughs> maybe that's your hobby too. So yeah, what what would be some hobbies you things you enjoy doing for fun? Well, I do like PC gaming. That's why I said okay. that. Uh, so there there's that aspect of it. But uh, you know, I have a I, I built the swimming pool in my backyard and the deck around it. So I, I do like to do home improvement projects. I'm good with tools. I like designing things, uh, but I also like using them too. So uh, you know, uh, this summer I built a a built a barbecue pit because I was doing a pig roast, having uh, a fan hosting a family reunion wow. I had probably 75 people from around the country show up at my house. You know, learned a lot, nice. <laughs> but I, I, I needed a way to cook the pig. So I built the barbecue pit. Um, 
did my research, found uh, what I would call redneck engineering barbecue pit. Uh, it, uh, it's a bunch of cinder blocks and some rebar and some expanded metal. And uh, the summer has been all about learning how to barbecue really good. Right. That is awesome. That's awesome. And you, enjoy, and you, make, you did the swimming pool yourself too? Well, actually, I, I, I hired somebody to put the swimming pool in, but um, I did uh, I did all the utilities for it. Okay. And I did the design of where it was going. and I, But I did design and build the deck around it. And it's a 30 by 60 deck around the pool, so oh. it's not uh, something inconsequential. That's a massive deck. Okay, wow. And you did all that. I had help. I, I leveraged my library. Um, so right. I, right. I had a buddy from high school that uh, works for a construction company, and I, I burned his ear on – you know, how I should do the, the, the beams and the, and the joists and if what I was doing was right. And I even paid him hourly to come in and work with me to, to show me some carpentry things that I didn't know how to do. Um, and it, it all stems from, you know, before where I said, you know, don't be afraid, you know, or you said it, don't be afraid to, to do something. The right. first, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. That's right. You know, the first one. That's right. Um, well, that's wonderful. Any other hobbies? Uh, I coach baseball. I coach basketball. Okay. Sometimes well, <laughs> sometimes I get overly angry. Um, I'm very competitive uh, when it comes to sports. Um, yep. I like to do more of it, but uh, as Father Times catches up. Yep, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah coaching, you know, I made a, an answer the other day about what are some guarantees in life. And, <clears throat> you know, we have death and taxes, and then I threw in your blood pressure going up if you coach kids, you know, because it's just the That's way it, it. is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just have that competitive streak and you, 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 yeah. you, you, you almost, and it takes a team of coaches because we got to calm, you reach rotate, calming each other down at times. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Remember it's about the kids. Yes, yeah. You're right. I, I keep telling myself that, but I, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> uh, and my poor son, you know, I tell him, you know, sometimes somebody, uh, you know, you get it from the coach and that. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> That's a, well, that's a great lead into the next question. Love to hear about family. You said you just hosted that big 75 plus family reunion. So what can you tell us about your family? Well, uh, I got uh, um, an 11 year old boy, a 17 year old daughter, right? They're both radically different. Um, you know, the, the young man is, uh, he's into sports. He's, you know, um, an aspiring future engineer, good at math, good with spatial relations and all that. Uh, very uh, extroverted, uh, has a lot of friends, you know, puts yep. himself out there. Uh, the daughter, she's a fantastic artist, um, a lot more introverted. Um, and you, it's, it's interesting, you know, what uh, can come out of the same gene pool. Um, she's 17. We started looking at colleges. We're looking at several art and design colleges, uh, one in Georgia, one in Florida. She aspires to work at Disney. And back to the library, I was at uh, um, a Rockwell Automation Tech Ed event and got went to a dinner. Um, and I was sitting next to two engineers from Disney. So where do you hire your interns from in the conversation? Yeah. Right. It's so important. Uh, the wife, um, you know, met her uh, um, after the Navy. Um, yep. You know, she's a, a, a t special education teacher uh, for 20 years. Um, she's actually running for the school board in Medina uh, City here. Oh, very cool. Yep. So the, any other family there in, in Ohio? Oh, tons. <laughs> <laughs> very good i got family in ohio and texas and florida and louisiana and nice. i probably left a few out <laughs> nice nice well it sounds like you have a wonderful family i have 11 year old myself and that's a fun age i'm i'm I, I don't they haven't got to 17 yet i'm dreading that because i have girls so you can give me some advice on how to manage a 17 year old girl one day i'll have to do it offline because yeah. it's not all appropriate <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> one of my old bosses or mentors gave me a a, a great thing uh he, and again, I'll, you know, you just, there's two years where you just got to be really strict with the girls. <laughs> right. Right. That's right. It's pretty much the boys too. Cause yeah. uh, you know, when you, we're, we're all teenagers, we know with, uh, as teenagers, uh, we tend to be more res responding to the chemical processes happening in our body than in the intellectual processes between our ears. That's right. <laughs> Very well put. Very well put. Thank you. Now, how about uh, things you enjoy for fun, podcasts, YouTube channels, any books you read, and it could be, you know, prefer personal stuff, professional stuff, just, just, we love to share resources with our listeners. Um, yeah, you know, um, I, I also tell people often, I'm not an engineer. I'm a philosopher who took up engineering. Um, I, I like the process of thinking more yeah. than what I'm thinking of. Um, and, and with that, uh, I got introduced to several good books as, as, uh, in my high school years. Um, one was called, uh, uh Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance written by Robert Persig. Um, 
very good book about uh, a concept called arete, which the close, closest uh, equivalency in English language is quality. But you can tell when somebody actually cares about what they're doing and the quality they put into it. Right. There's an excellence to it. That's arete. Um, and, and it talked about, uh, you know, what what's missing in modern life? You know, why are people not happy? Um, and how, why are we not reaching um, what arete is? You know, because we're not doing what makes us happy or what we care about um, in, in many ways. And another one was Irrational Man, where I got to study a bunch of existentialists. Um, very big fan of like Heidegger. Um, Kierkegaard has said a few th- good things, Pascal. Uh, but you don't take everything they say as a whole, just uh, clubs and clubs in your own uh, bag on your back when you pull them out when you need them. Right, right. Very good. Very good. And we'll make sure we put those links in the show notes for listeners. I want to check those out. So Mike, we love to play a lightning round in these hero conversations. And this is just right. firing off random stuff at you. I uh, love to get some, get your feedback. So it's, it's, it's quick hit. You don't have to go deep in the answers. Okay. Seven true pyramids. <laughs> Swimble dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, buddy. Let's, right. uh, let's, let's go favorite food to start with. Lobster. Lobster, my man. How about adult beverage? Uh, I've been I've been big into old fashions lately. Oh man, we have a lot in common. All right, very good. So, favorite sports team? Oh, it uh, it rotates. Um, as but as much as I, I hate them and I, I say I'm never going to watch them again, I always find myself back on Sunday in my abusive relationship with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you, you kind of there. You have to be that, right? That's it. I had my opportunity. I lived in Houston for three years. They had a pretty good team. And I just, I just like, it just didn't feel right. Right, right, right. <laughs> it just felt wrong. I was cheating on them or something. Now, what's your, what's your favorite app on your phone? Uh, um, I still use Facebook a lot. Okay. I'm probably date myself with that. That's okay. How about uh, a guilty pleasure? I think I already covered that bourbon, right? Yeah. <laughs> That are all of that. How about what's on your nightstand? What is on my nightstand? Uh, a lamp and a clock. All right. And toenail Sim- clippers. <laughs> Simple man. There you go. So I am curious on, on this one from you since you traveled the world. What's the coolest place you've ever been to? All of them. Um, you know, and that, yeah, and I'll throw some stories out there. Like the one place I thought never that wasn't on my list that I thought I didn't think I ever really wanted to go there until I went there was Scotland. Um, okay. just seeing the, the history and the beauty of it. Um, and then the, you know, the, the people there too, were, were, were outstanding. Um, I mean, obviously Italy and Spain, the food, the churches, um, Germany, uh, I'm a foodie. So <laughs> there's, there's that aspect, the beer in Germany, the people, uh, the architecture there is just, uh, was fantastic. Japan, just seeing, the um, the architecture there as well. Um, you know, and, there's a long story about in Japan where I got lost in a train station and I had the Japanese people just help me where I wanted to go. It was just nice affirmation and humanity, no matter where you go. Um, but part of that is whenever you go somewhere, don't be afraid to experience it. Right. Very don't just stay in the casino. Right. Right. Get out there. And, and, and like you said, experience it, see things, experience things and, and, and live. So how about last question? It's a softball dogs or cats. Dogs. My man. I All have right. a dog. I have a, I, it was a, one of my kids. I forgot to mention is my five-year-old son, Ludo. He's a, a, a lab uh, German shepherd mix. Oh, wow. You got a big dog. Okay. Yep. Probably bigger than he should be, but most people in my family are. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure he has fun out there about a barbecue pit. Oh yeah. He sees, he knows when it's barbecue and he shows up. That's right. That's right. This has been a wonderful conversation, Mike, and we always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why, and it just talks about your passions, what's important to you, what drives you. So what would be your personal why? Always be better. Always be better. I'd give my son three rules. Okay. You know? um, always do the last 5%. Work hard, make good choices, and do what's expected of you. That should be on a T-shirt. You do those, you do those three things. And one of them I slipped two in there. So maybe it's four things you do those, you do those things. You're, you're probably going to be successful. You got that right. Well, your son is, is blessed to have you, you know, speaking that type of truth to him. So hats off to you. You are definitely one of our heroes. Mike really enjoyed this conversation for the, for the listeners, check out the show notes, links to connect with Mike links to connect with Fines Elstrad and, and all the other 
items we talked about today. But, Mike, this has been uh, just a, a fun conversation to get to know you. So thank you for taking the time with us today. Well, thank you for having me, Chris. And if you ever pass uh, through the Cleveland area, we can uh, partake of my bourbon collection. We will have to do that. An old-fashioned with you and maybe some barbecue sounds like a, a reason to yeah. come to Cleveland. And don't forget the soundboard guy. He's important, too. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Adam, he'll, I'll make sure Adam comes with me, man. We'll have a good time. Right. He's, he's an old-fashioned connoisseur as, as well, so uh, we'll be good to go there. Outstanding. Well, you have a wonderful day. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. What a great conversation with Mike. I know what stood out to me the most was how you need to advocate for yourself and you need to leverage that network because that's what really is going to help you grow in your career. And remember, send us those war stories. You can hit us up directly on Facebook and Instagram. Love to hear from you. And if you're really enjoying Eco Ask Why, please hit that five-star rating. That would mean the world to us. And I hope you remember, keep asking why.